money. It is a subject. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19. He said. A feast is made for laughter. And wine maketh merry. But money answereth all things. The contrary is 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. He said. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. This morning, we have a fourfold objective or five. One, we want to understand why we must know money. Why we must know money. Understanding why we must know money or know about money. That will take us to understanding the power of money. Understanding why we must know money or know about money. Number two, you know, that's, that will take us to understanding the power of money. That's still number one. Number two, we'll be understanding what our relationship with money should be. Understanding what our relationship with money should be. That will show us the place of money in the life of a child of God. The place of money. Number three, will be understanding kingdom keys to having money. Kingdom keys. That will give us usher us into the exploration of money. Number four, we shall be understanding what to do with money. What to do with money. Money has entered my hands. What do I do with it? And then number, six, number five, Understanding money traps to avoid. Money traps to avoid. What are the traps regarding money that I must avoid? Lift one right hand up and say after me, say, Father. Help me. Help me to do it well. Help me to understand the place of money. Help me, Lord, to understand the place of money in life. In the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. Our gymnastics girl is um, going for certain assignment. Hallelujah. By way of introduction, okay, why must we know money? What should our relationship with money be? What are the kingdom keys to having money? That is exploring, exploring the potential of money. What do we do with money? The possibilities of money. And what are the traps to avoid the problems of money? I want to start by way of introduction. That 
money plays such a vital role, a key role, a pivotal role for human existence. Everybody will need money at one time or the other or in fact need money permanently. Listen to this. Nobody is too spiritual to need money. Am I communicating? Nobody is too educated. He has so much degrees. He doesn't need money. Nobody is too physically powerful to need money. Nobody is too beautiful for money. I am too fine. I don't need money. Nobody is too talented. I, I can sing more than a singing bird. And I don't need money. Nobody. Money is so vital to life. That Jesus spoke majorly. He spoke a lot about money. On both sides. And the apostles. But this is the challenge. The unfortunate challenge is that very few people. Including those who have money. Very few people know money. No, very few people really know what money is. Money. Very few people know the power of money. The place that money occupies or should occupy. The potentials of money and the problems of money. Look at your neighbor say, please listen very well. You are going to hear things today that will change your life. Now, when we are ignorant on the knowledge of money, we become victims of the challenges of money. Somebody says is money good or evil. Money is neutral. Whether it is good or evil, it depends on who is holding it. It's immoral, it's neutral, it's neutral. There is the neutrality of money. It is the owner, the holder of the money that determines the goodness or badness of money. And we're going to go to that now. Why must we know about money? And this will show us the power of money. Number one, money affects the quality of human life. It affects the quality of our lives. It affects the quality of our lives. It affects the quality of man's life. Someone is living in a seven bedroom duplex. In a high brow area of the city. Another person is living in an uncompleted one room apartment. In a slum part of the city, the difference is the availability of money. It's not because the person who is living in the one bedroom apartment in the slum does not like the seven bedroom duplex. It is the availability of money. When somebody says I'm looking for house, it's actually not looking for house. Because houses are everywhere. Anywhere you want to live, you can. You, there are houses of one million dollars. There are houses of five million dollars. There are houses everywhere. What somebody was looking for is money. If you want to buy, there is house to buy. If you want to buy hundred hectares now, there is land to buy. Number two, and that is why the Bible said in First Timothy chapter six verse seventeen. First Timothy chapter 6 and in verse 17 he said 
Judge them that are rich in this world. That they be not high minded. Nor trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God. Who giveth us richly. All things to enjoy. I prophesy to somebody here today. The quality of your life will change after today. If you are saying amen, say it loud amen. amen. Number two. Very important. Money affects the focus of man's spirituality. It affects the focus of our spirituality. Money affects it. The focus of our spirituality. Money affects it. In Mark chapter 12 verse 29 to 30. Mark 12 29 to 30. He said. And Jesus answered him. The first of all commandment is. Hear O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul. And with all your mind. And with all your strength. Everybody here can confirm. That if scarcity is worrying you. It's not possible to focus on the Lord with all your mind. <laughs> he said, Chineke. It's not possible. It's not possible for 100% of your attention to be on God. House rent is not yet paid. 100% of your attention is on God. Children's school fees are there. There is a debt on your neck. It's not, it affects the focus of man's spirituality. That was why he said in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 27. He said, And you shall know. Okay, verse 26. Verse 26. He said, And you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. And when you have eaten and you are satisfied, then you can praise the name of the Lord your God. It is easy to praise when hunger is absent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> My children, when they were very young, there was a particular child, as soon as food arrives, singing starts. I'm talking of child of three or four years. It was not premeditated. It just, just that's the song is automatic. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It affects the focus of our spirituality. I heard the story some time ago when the, the, they say, Praise the Lord. Instead of saying hallelujah, somebody in the church said, 100 naira. What was happening was that while the service was on, Hundred naira she was owing somebody occupied her mind. I'm talking about 20 years ago or more. How am I going to pay this money? Listen to this. It affects the focus of your spirituality because the time you, you need to use to, to, to stand in the gap, to intercede for the souls that are lost, to intercede for revival. You are using that time to pray about money problems. Lord, I need you to set me free from this financial harassment. I'm, I'm trusting you for a change of story. For how long will my life remain like this? Father, change my story. That occupies the prayer vocabulary of a man who has money challenge. But when bills are paid, when you are owing nobody under heaven, you can open your mouth and say, Father, I am trusting you for you to turn around the, the situation of our nation. I am trusting you for the salvation of the lost. I am trusting you for deliverance of, 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 of so and so person. Money is so powerful that it affects the focus of our spirituality. Number three. This is very, very serious. Money reveals the reality of our character. It reveals the reality of man's character. 
it affects the focus of man's spirituality it reveals the reality of man's character it unveils the true nature and identity of a person you don't know people in, humi in, in poverty you don't know who they are it's in prosperity you know who people are Most people have an impartation of humility where there is poverty. They are very, very sober. Very, very gentle. Very, very cool. Very, very amenable. Easily entreatable. You can discuss with them. Abraham Lincoln said, you don't know anybody in adversity. If you want to know anybody, give him power. And one of the powers you can give to somebody to know him is the power of money. That man will not marry plenty wives in poverty. But the marriage of many wives is inside him. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. It's inside their body. But poverty can't support such a lifestyle. It is when money arrives that he now realizes that his wife is getting old. He needs to change his, his wife like he changes his car. <laughs> Am I communicating? That is, that, that is where you know people is frequenting church because there is no money. Let money arrive. That is where you will know his real church attendance. That is why you need to have plenty money so you can know your true character. I will say another thing very soon. That humble man, gentle man, becomes proud, becomes arrogant becomes very rude can talk to anybody anyhow because he has some money there is nothing that unravels character like money i have made up my mind that no amount of position no amount of money no amount of resources will alter my character i have made up my mind that kind of money may it never near my hand that kind of position, that kind of influence, may it never near my hand. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? The Bible says, the poor uses entreaties. He will just say, please, now, please, can we do it like this? He said, but the rich, they speak roughly. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 23. The rich, well, they speak very, very roughly. The poor use that in treaties, but the rich answer it roughly. I have money so I can talk to anybody anyhow. That character was in him when he was in poverty, but he didn't come out. You know, when you put sponge inside water and you press the sponge, what will come out? When you put sponge inside oil and you press that sponge, what will come out? The question is, is it the pressure that put the oil inside? Is it the pressure that put the water inside? The pressure only came to reveal what was already inside. <laughs> Somebody drank one day and he began to insult the hell out of his father-in-law. All the insults you can never think of. He insulted the hell out of his father-in-law. When... He returned back to his senses. They said, what happened? He said, it's alcohol. <laughs> insult was inside. He was planning how to insult his father. <laughs> alcohol helped him to bring it out. The, the things he has not been able to, to tell his father-in-law, he was able to tell him by the power of it and all. Am I communicating that? Is it possible now? How many languages do you speak? Like three 
Which and which? Good. Have you spoken Portuguese before? Is there anything under heaven, no matter what you did, that can make Portuguese come out under any form of provocation? Somebody insulted you until you started speaking Portuguese. Somebody say it loud, amen. I, I am praying for somebody here today. That is why God has not been able to bless many people. He knows their tendencies. He knows they will begin to walk on their head. That's why God has limited the breakthrough of many. He knows what they, they will kill person and kill themselves. I pray today that Jehovah God will cause each one of us to know our possibilities and potentials so that we can ask for his help to take us to our destiny. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Number four, money confirms our true object of worship. What a person really worships is confirmed by the presence of money. It confirms our true object of worship. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, it said, no man can serve two masters. For either he will be, he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The presence of money confirms our true object of worship. I want you to know that money is the other thing that struggles to be worshipped apart from God. That he wants to be worshipped like God. What do we mean by object of worship? That is money commands their devotion. Money commands their dedication. Commands their submission. They will do for money what they won't do for God. They will do for the sake of money what they will never do for God. Money. If the agenda of the kingdom clashes with the agenda of their business, the agenda of the kingdom can go to hell. They sacrifice kingdom agenda in the favor of their business and earthly agenda. That is when money becomes the object of worship. Money confirms our true object. It confirms whether we are worshiping God in truth or not. Also Luke chapter 16 verse 13. Money confirms our true object of worship. Number three, or number five now, Money affects the extent of our impact in the kingdom. The extent of our impact. What you can do for God. What you can do for the kingdom. What you can do for, the, for humanity. Is either limited or limitless on the basis of money. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 said. Cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts. My city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. My city's true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. There are many people who wish they could do more for the kingdom. More for the less privileged. But they feel limited by scarcity. They feel restrained by shortage. The outcome of it is frustration. That is the power of money. The founder of Temple University, Conwell Russell, said you can do more good with money especially if you're a good man than without it that's why i said the money is neutral if you're a good person intending to do good with more money you can do more than without it that is number five number six money affects our choices in life it affects choices money money consideration affects choices Choices that we make most times if there are money considerations they affect our choices and some of the choices made on the basis of money can be regrettable choices and I'll give you an example somebody got a job that pays him one million a month and got another job 
that pays him 250,000 a month. The job that pays him 1 million a month clashes with Sunday service. The job that pays him 1 million a month makes him to tell lies on behalf of his boss. Is the man around? No, he's not around. Like one child said some time ago, is your father around? No, he said I should tell you he's not around. <laughs> All right. Now, now that, that kind of thing. But he chose the job of one million because it carries more money. 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 Young lady, there are two men. One, two. This one is average. Doesn't have so much yet. Even though he has vision. And he has so many things inside him, but not so much yet. This one, already made. He has duplex in Asokoro. Another one in Maitama. He has one in Lagos. In Lekki. But I call GRA. Has house in Paris. He's 35, going to almost 40 now, but he's not yet married. Out of these two, which one will you marry? Uh, which one should I marry? <laughs> which one? I mean, what kind of question are you asking me? The, the one I am to marry is very clear. This man that will fly me abroad everywhere. Who wants to?